this spot there. Hillary Fletcher. Here. Jackie Gusick. Present. Shelly Hunt. Here. Robert Kelly. Here. Susan Lane. Jim Morrison. Here. Kelly Schaefer. Here. Kenzie Grant. Here. Neil Sin. Here. Teresa Napson Williams. Here. Susan Henderson Udis. Here. Madam President, we have a quorum. Excellent. First up on the agenda, we're going to do is approval of the minutes. Do I have a motion to pass the legislative meeting minutes of August 26, 2021? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Uh, at this time, we don't have a presentations and awards, nor do we have educational presentations. So we'll move on to our student liaison reports. Uh, but first, I would like to welcome our new student liaisons, which is tremendously exciting. Yes, indeed. So, it sounds like we have people in person as well, actual students. We have two returning senior members, and they're, of course, Ava Finnegan and Kenzie Grant. Um, our new board member is also Neil Sen, and Neil is a junior. And we look forward to hearing the student board members present the school reports. So thank you so very much for joining us. Uh, hi, my name is Neil Sen, and I'll be doing the reports for Media Elementary School, Indian Lane, Rose Street, and Springton. So this is for uh, Media Elementary School. It's official. We opened our doors on Monday, August 30th, and welcomed 481 kindergarten to grade five children to the start of a new school year and in-person learning. The first few weeks of school have been busy ones with getting to know you activities and beginning of the year assessments. Learners have been settling into the routines and procedures that a new school year brings us. Welcome back, Mustang families. It's good to have you with us. Uh, Media Elementary School hosted its annual back to school night on Wednesday, September 8th. Although virtual again this year, it was great to see so many families visit their children's classrooms and encore teachers. We look forward to continuing our partnership with our media families and look forward to a positive year of learning and growing together. Today, Media Elementary School enjoyed a visit from our local Media Wawa store as part of their Cheers for Classrooms initiative. Wawa provided the media team with donuts and coffee as a thank you for all that we are doing. We thank them for their generosity and support and support of our teaching teams. Finally, we are off and running and looking forward to a successful year at Media Elementary School. It is certain to be an exciting one. Um, the next one is for Indian Lane. Um, so for the first few weeks of school, um, we were filled with anticipation and excitement as all our students were ready for their new challenges of Bobcat. Despite the scorching temperatures, our students started the new year demonstrating that they are ready, respectful, and responsible for a successful year. In keeping with our school-wide positive behavior system, teachers and staff members have already begun to hand out Bobcat brags to students in an effort to recognize ready, respectful, and responsible behaviors. We collect our brags and use them to cover a giant paw print on the wall outside our cafeteria. We celebrated a successful start of the school year with a pride assembly outside where students participated in yoga and, mind and mindfulness activities. Our kindergarten families gathered at our playground for an ice cream social sponsored by the PTG on Tuesday, September 14th. Finally, we would like to thank the custodial and maintenance staff for having our school in tip top shape for the return of our students. Their efforts help provide a great first impression to our students and families as they return to school. The next will be for Rose Tree Media School, uh, the Rose Tree Elementary School. Uh, the Rose Tree Elementary School community uh, have had a great start to the new school year. Our students are very excited to be back in person, attending school five days a week. At the end of August, we were able to hold a modified open house for new and returning families. Kindergarten and new family orientations were held virtually. 
A virtual back to school night was held on Tuesday, September 14th. Despite being virtual, teachers had the opportunity to share information about the instructional program offered in the Rose Street Media School District with parents. Parents also appreciated being introduced to the special area teachers who will be teaching their children this year. On Monday, September 21st, many students at Rose Street Elementary, at Rose Street Elementary celebrated International Peace Day. In recognition of this day, students spent time reading uh, specially selected books, holding class discussions on the topics of peace, singing songs, and reciting poetry. Fourth grade students even formed an outdoor human peace center. Hopefully a deeper understanding of the meaning of peace transferred to the greater school community. And the last would be Swinton Lake Middle School. It has, been, uh, it has been great having all our students back in the building for in-person learning. Students appeared excited to be with their peers and their new teachers. For the first time this year, we opened the school year with a, with a day for sixth grade only. This was a, a day for our newest Spartans to become acclimated to the building without all the hustle and bustle that comes with nearly 950 students. This change also allowed for all of our staff members to be involved with the transition. It was a great day. Sprinton Lake has over 50 new students. The school counselors have been busy meeting with students and families, creating schedules and giving tours. New seventh and eighth grade students have been given a buddy to help with their transition to Sprinton. The health and physical education department is excited to have everybody back in person and to get everyone moving again. The 21-22 school year for physical education has started well for all students. Students were immediately introduced to team building activities that allowed them to get to know their classmates as well as work on physical and mental problem solving. In the following class, students were able to see and ask questions about the various units they will experience throughout the year. The students will have the opportunity to to try a variety of, of activities in physical education and will have exposure to adventure education, invasion games, lifetime fitness, net and wall activities, and multicultural and recreational activities. Those are all Thank you very much. Hi, my name is Kenzie Grant. And I'll be reading the reports from Pencrest and Glenwood. I'll start with Pencrest. Pencrest is off to a strong start. We began the year with an open house for our ninth grade students. Student volunteers greeted our new students and gave building tours so that students could walk, could walk their schedules. Our PTG and fair representatives joined us in welcoming our new families and our new principal, Mr. Roth, greeted every student and family member as they joined us. Students have settled into their schedules and into the rhythm of a more normal Pencrest life. Our schedule includes two periods a week for intervention extension of curriculum so that students can get help from teachers during the school day and explore new learning opportunities. Twice a month, we will participate in building-wide SEE activities for all students to help them rebuild, rebuild for, to help them to rebuild community post-pandemic. We look forward to continuing with the successful fall sports and band season and the revival of all active extracurricular program over the coming months. From the art department, with the help of 12 local schools in Delco, Delco Land Mini Golf will be decked out in murals representing schools and their towns throughout Delco. Thank you, Marple Newtown, Ridley, Interboro, Pencrest, Haverford, Sun Valley, Cardinal O'Hara, Upper Darby, Springfield, and Bonner and Prendy. Also a big thank you to the kids of Delco. From the band department, the band is happy to be playing for audiences again this year. They have been practicing and preparing for a successful season, giving impromptu concerts to staff from the office lawn and performing for our new students at, open at our open house on August 25th. They had a recent successful trip to Conestoga High School. A, Con a Conestoga parent wrote to Mr. Snyder to compliment the band after the game on September 10th. She said, I'm a Conestoga mom. Two of our sons are in the marching band and therefore I was volunteering at the snack, at the snack stand at last night's game. I just wanted to compliment your students from the band that came to get some treats. Every single one of them was so polite. I also witnessed your school's photographer spotting a younger kid who I don't even think he knew a few bucks because he was a little short of cash for the thing he ordered. On this typical anniversary, it was really great to see this human kindness. From child development, our child development program, one of our most popular elective programs, continues to seek ways to create real world learning opportunities for our students. Currently, Child Development 2 students are working with students in the linking learning of life classroom. The students help with job-related skills and assist with classwork. From the English department, 
English teachers have been working with students as they respond to their summer reading and begin, and begin an exciting new school year. Students in Ms. Gregg's accelerated composition class read Kindred by Octavia Butler for summer reading. In order to analyze the four themes of the book, groups of students collaborated to create Google slide theme posters for ethics, race, history, and family. Groups wrote a thesis for their theme, cited quotes from the book, and related each quote to their thesis statement as a follow-up. Students posted to a class discussion reflecting on the content of each of the other group's themes. Teachers have been delivering start-of-year start of benchmark assessments so that they can target students' needs and track their growth. Ninth grade English teachers have developed have delivered the math assignment. Tenth grade teachers delivered the classroom diagnostic tool for Keystone exams this week. And 11th grade teachers are working with students as they target preparation for next month's PSAT. From the Physical Education and Health Department, in Phys Ed, classes are beginning the school year by completing presidential fitness testing. Classes are also engaged in team and individual games with a focus on the fifth fitness component, on the five fitness components. In health, they're starting off the year with an emphasis on mental health. Classes are practicing breathing techniques and meditation. They're also developing ways to cope with mental illness. From the science department, the AP environmental classes conducted a mark return recapture experiment at Ridley Creek State Park in November, or in September. By using sweep nets, grasshoppers are captured, marked, released, and then captured a week later to estimate their population in the area. The AP environmental classes will take a trip to Hawk Mountain Sanctuary in October to spot and identify migrating raptors in order to study raptor identification, migratory patterns, and changing populations of raptors. And finally, from the World Language Department, three Pencrest World Language students traveled abroad this past summer to hone their language skills and enhance their understanding of the target cultures. Haley Meyer, senior, studied French in Morocco. Shannon Sonetta, senior, studied French in France. And Nicola Pepper, junior, studied Spanish in Mexico. The students have shared their amazing experiences through videos. These videos can be accessed through Pencrest Study Abroad Opportunities websites. The Phyllis Kavanaugh Scholarship for Summer Study Abroad and the Keith Sendel Scholarship for Extended Study Abroad will be accepting applications to study abroad in summer 22 and 22-23 school year until October 22nd. Information about study abroad opportunities is being shared through Pencrest World Language Classes and the display case in Lower A-Wing. There will be a study abroad interest meeting for students and parents on October 6th at 8 p.m. on Zoom. A representative from CIEE will present the Global Navigator Program and explain financial need and merit scholarship opportunities for Pencrest students. A link to the meeting will be posted on the Pencrest Study Abroad Opportunity website. And from Glenwood Elementary, we are pleased to welcome our students back for the 21-22 school year. We're off to a great start. Rooms are set up, desks are spaced out, and our students are getting into their routines. We held grade level assemblies to discuss our expectations and guidelines. All 520 students have done a wonderful job being ready, respectful, and responsible. We have reached our first PBIS goal of earning 200 falls. As a reward and to show off our school spirit, we had a Glenwood Spirit slash Pride Day. All the students, faculty, and staff wore our Glenwood green and white. We had a wonderful participation at our virtual back to school nights, giving the teachers as well as parents guardians the opportunity, the opportunity to put a face with the name. It is wonderful to have everyone back in our building and our Glenwood heroes are back in full swing. Thank you. Thank you so very much. It's really exciting to once again be able to hear the student reports and all the amazing things that are going on in person in our schools. Um, and I can speak from experience that those Bobcat Braggs and Indian Lane are powerful motivators at, at home behavior as well. So uh, wonderful. All right, then, uh, moving on now to board liaison reports. Uh, do we have a report um, for DCCC? Yes, we do. I have three items tonight. I'll start with the least exciting and end with um, um, kind of five minute view on something that's really exciting that's happening at the Delaware County Community College. The first, uh, but not so exciting, is that the, the liaison dinner will be live streamed and online this year for uh, on October 21st. Um, the second thing is after consultation with the college's legal counsel and the board of trustees, Delaware County Community College will require proof of vaccination for all students, faculty, staff, and visitors effective January 1st, 2022. Um, there'll be an exemption option for those individuals who may have reasons for not taking the vaccine and they will continue to offer the online classes and um, support services so that students' educational progress is not delayed. 
Um, more information is going to be released um, later on in the semester, but I know we have some students who do dual enrollment, so it'll be important for everybody to know that. Okay, the third thing, which is the really exciting thing, is um, last school year, I highlighted to this board in our community that Westchester University and Delaware County Community College had strengthened their dual admissions program such that qualified DCCC students can at first earn their associate's degree at Delaware County, and then they can move on and transfer seamlessly over to Westchester with guaranteed housing, renewable scholarships, and um, successful coaching to, to make that transition. So on September 15th this year, um, Westchester University and Delaware County Community College have joined a national initiative to help historically underserved populations in Southeastern Pennsylvania graduate from college. This includes students of color, low income families, and first generation college students. It's called the Moonshot for Equity, and it's a student success initiative led by EAB, which is an education firm based in Washington. I think they used to be called the Education Achievement Board, and they've just shortened it to EAB now. Um, and then um, they'll be the first two members of the Southeastern Pennsylvania's regional conference for this. Um, and their, their mission is to change the following statistic. Um, currently, about half of Black and Latino students who enter college earn a half an undergraduate degree in six years, but that compares with nearly 70% of white students. And the statistics are similarly um, low for first generation college students, those from families with lower incomes, regardless of race. So um, Joyce, Joy, Gase, Joy Gates Black from DCCC and um, Westchester University both take it very seriously to um, help students who haven't been able to progress over the years due to no doing of their own that have that have been historically marginalized or left out of the educational process. Moreover, they're gonna start working, um, they're gonna start partnering with local high schools, businesses, and community leaders to help more underserved, underserved students gain access to college as well as jobs, help with count, um, find counselors, search for scholarships, and really help with best fit universities. So um, this is the first of its kind in Southeast Eastern Pennsylvania and um, I think everybody's very excited about this. Certainly the, the Pennsylvania Department of Education was very excited about it as other, other national organizations. So this is a big step forward, I think, for our community and it'll be a great opportunity for our, our students as well. Thank you so much for sharing this hunt. This is indeed exciting. I look forward to future updates on it. Much obliged. Yeah, what a great partnership. Um, do we have reports for our DCIU or Legislative Council? We do. Excellent. Is this really on? Okay. Um, so the technical school is seeing its highest enrollment in the last 30 years, welcoming uh, 765 new students for a total of 1,250 students, which is fantastic. They'll um, host the uh, Regional Skills USA competition this January, um, where students will have a chance to demonstrate their skills and knowledge um, about the technical programs they're in. Uh, and be judged by industry professionals. Uh, last year's was virtual. They, they hope to have this year's in person. We'll see how it goes. Um, the technical school will also continue an articulation agreement with the University of Northwestern Ohio for automotive technology and HVAC students to receive credits for work completed. And relationships like this just reinforce the value of technical school education. Um, for our information, um, I am trying to secure a time, I think, uh, maybe um, Maria has sort of maybe spoken with you, uh, Eleanor, about securing a time for us to uh, tour um, the, the school in action, some of the programs in action. Um, on the legislative front, I'd like to give a few updates. There are a number of bills that could impact uh, charter funding reform that are floating around right now, impact both positively and negatively. Um, there are ongoing conversations about addressing school, uh, school bus driver shortage and teacher shortages at the state level. Nine amendments were offered to block or change Governor Wolf's math bill, none of which were successful. But it's in, important to note that they, they do wind up taking a lot of time, all of these bills introduced um, for that purpose. Um, PSBA provided feedback to House staff regarding legislation, which uh, provides for a pilot program where school districts could have an MOU to allow social workers to be placed in schools to help provide social support services. 
They're also providing feedback on a proposal that would institute a study of all educator training mandates to see if there are um, unnecessary or overly burdensome training mandates which could be alleviated. And House Bill uh, 1803 was introduced by Rep Representative Cerisi, uh, basically states that if a charter school is going to um, open that uh, a board member from the local uh, public school should have a seat on that board. And Representative Cerisi is the same gentleman who introduced uh, House Bill 272, which I spoke about last year, um, which is for uh, charter funding reform. It's a great bill. It has about 20% Republican buy-in at this point, which is really promising, and it's not said yet. So mm -hmm. that is all I have to report today. Thank you very much for the update on the BCIU and Legislative <laughs> Council at um, Times. I believe we also have a report in regards to our Social Emotional Learning Ad Hoc Committee. Sure. Um, thank you. So the Social Emotional Learning Ad Hoc Committee, you may all remember, um, started last school year. Um, Shelly and I were both on the committee with uh, Dr. Julia Bennett and Dr. Gardner and Student Services um, to really just take a look at how social emotional learning is integrated into um, programs and board policy. It's really a great learning opportunity for Shelly and I um, to explore some of that work with Dr. Julian and, and um, Dr. Gardner. And we also had an opportunity to participate on the wellness committee with a number of stakeholders. Um, one of the core um, deliverables of the committee was to really take a look at policy and how we can integrate it into board policy or not, or maybe could be better integrated. Um, and so with that, we've taken a look at how that might um, that conversation might move forward. And so those of you that were at our last committee meeting um, may have heard that we're looking at sort of reorganizing how the committees are structured. Um, and given that, and given that social emotional learning and equity, um, peace and belonging, it's all kind of coming together. We've decided it makes sense to sort of pause the work of the ad hoc um, and explore how that might fit into some of the work moving forward, particularly as we have broader uh, policy conversations. Um, so we thought it'd be helpful to sort of provide that update. So in case you're not hearing about it, um, that's why it certainly hasn't gone anywhere. It's just that um, the pieces are sort of coming together in a different way as we move forward. Um, so more updates coming um, at future meetings. Thank you very much, Ms. Schaefer. I believe that concludes our uh, reports right now. So with that being said, why don't we go ahead on to the superintendent's report, please. Thank you. It has been a busy start to the school year, and it's been wonderful to have all our students back for full in-person learning. Our students are happy to be back, seeing their friends and teachers, and our staff and PPPs have worked hard to make their welcome as special as possible. We will continue to focus on academic and social emotional recovery as our students reacclimate to in-person learning and we adjust teaching and learning strategies to meet student needs. Universal screeners for kindergarten through ninth grade are in process of being completed so that we can identify learning gaps and allocate resources to support student growth, achievement, and wellness. We appreciate all the support of our community as we continue to address the challenges that COVID places in front of us. Our mitigation layers appear to be successful in limiting the spread of the virus in our schools. A special thank you to all our school nurses who are working tirelessly to complete needed testing, contact tracing, and notification on top of their already busy days of responding to the health needs of our students. They have been at the forefront of this for over 14 months and continue to be dedicated to helping our community navigate this health crisis. As we enter the fall season, we are looking forward to cooler days and the beginning of fall festivities in a celebration of the changing of the season. I continue to wish all our school community a safe and healthy fall season. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Jamirino Lennon. Nandra Silas, report, please. Thank you, Madam President. Last month, I reported that the school district received 36 residential taxpayer tax appeals for the year 2022. This month, the school district has received another 40 residential taxpayer tax appeals in the year 2022, which means thus far, the school district is only confronted with 76 residential taxpayer appeals for the year 2022. Have yet to receive any commercial taxpayer tax appeals, but I expect that they are in the pipeline. And as soon as I have any information on that, needless to say, I will be reporting further to the Board of the Administration. You have the remainder of my report. That concludes my report, Madam President. Thank you very much, Mr. Kelly, for always keeping us so well informed about the numerous reassessment videos. 
All right, on to the uh, president's report then. Um, as you know, there was an executive session for matters of personnel today, September 23rd, 2021. And we will also have an executive session of the school board for matters of personnel at 6.30 p.m. prior to the next legislative meeting, which will be on October 28th, 2021. And legislative meetings are being recorded on tape. Set up here. Uh, I also do want to give a special shout out to everyone for the wonderful start of the school year. Uh, people have been working tirelessly and speaking as, as a parent as well, um, it just can't be beat to see how happy all the children are to be back in school. It takes a ton of work on the back end uh, with not just teachers, but um, medical staff, bus drivers, everybody, um, but it's been phenomenal and so rewarding to see. So we're going to move on to our scheduled presentations. Before we do, I just want to make a quick reminder that if you're interested in giving an unscheduled presentation, we definitely welcome you to do so. And the um, sign-up sheet should be in the back with the chief security gentleman right back there. So if you would like to do this unscheduled presentation, please be sure to sign up and we'd love to hear from you. Okay, now on to our scheduled presentation. We have Jeanette Berger with RTMEA. Thank you very much. Good evening. If you're in the passenger seat riding with me to work, you might find yourself listening to classical music and the SUS alarm on WRTI or hum al humming along with the college playlists on XPN. But my regular jam is the Preston and Steve show. This morning, their seven o'clock hour uh, radio jock team was discussing a, a survey which said 43% of people surveyed were working in their dream job. And the category of teachers was high on that list. I suspect if I was to poll our membership, that percentage would probably be much closer to 100%. Many of my colleagues, including myself, knew at some level from a very young age, we'd spend our grown up years as teachers. And as of today, we've been, fronted, we've been in front of our students for about three weeks. We are still in the honeymoon phase of getting to know our new students and they us. We are administering beginning of the year assessments and tending to the many social emotional needs of kids who've been in educational upheaval for 18 months. As the board and district discern allocation for ESSER funds, Rose Tree Media Educators ask the board to consider investing a portion of the funds in staff recruitment, support, and retention. It has been an eye-opening first 14 days of school. We are seeing the work that is ahead of us in this year. Over the past few years, our district has reduced the pool of support staff. Now more than ever, our classroom teachers and students need support. We encourage the district to continue planning for sustainable hiring of additional teachers and support staff, hiring which could be jump-started with ESSER funds. Smaller class sizes and push in support for classes will so benefit our students and help retain teachers who dutifully have dedicated themselves to their dream job, a teaching career here in Rose Tree Media School District. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, on to unscheduled presentations. And just a reminder on um, while I'm waiting for the sheet that the district residents and taxpayers mm -hmm. wishing to address the school board are encouraged to do so at this time. Written items are strongly suggested. A speaker should state their names and addresses for the record before commenting, and comments are limited to three minutes. The school board may suspend the public comment period after a reasonable amount of time. Also, profanity, shouting, and personal attacks will not be permitted. Uh, please note also that the public comment period is intended to provide an opportunity for citizens to address the board, but it is not an opportunity to participate in public debate or question and answer dialogue. So questions and answers will not be addressed publicly by the board during this legislative meeting. And that's why we request contact information uh, for administration so that the school district can indeed follow up with citizens' concerns following the meeting. I should also um, note as well that uh, for public comment period, um, and it's posted on, on the website there as well, that we are not able to hear um, matters related to a specific student, for example, through the privacy and confidentiality system in the public forum. So with all that being said, our first commenter is Sarah McKay from Upper Providence. Uh, 
Um, hello, Dr. D. Marino Linen and school board members. My name is Sarah McKay. Um, I live at 31 Letitia Lane. Uh, I have a th third grader at Media Elementary, and next year I'll have a kindergartner. Um, over the past year, you all have had one of the toughest jobs. You have been the target of much vitriol, and I know it hasn't been easy. So off the bat, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for how you have balanced the safety and health um, along with our children's education. As a board member of FAIR, Family Alliance for Respect and Equity, and as someone who's played a role in shaping the group's expansion and direction over the last four years, I want to commend you and the district for the new position of administrator for safe and inclusive schools. Mr. Harrison will be an asset to our district. This position is grossly needed. I have been told that the equity and inclusion work was previously spread across four different administrators who already had a large workload. I'm grateful that we have one person now dedicated to work along to this work alongside his safety and security duties. I know that equity, diversity, inclusion, and access is a part of our district-wide strategic plan, and I commend you for investing. Quite often, districts across the country say that they're going to do the work of EDI, but it is mostly lip service. Here, you are actually walking the walk. I know that over time, hundreds of students of color, LGBTQ students, students with learning differences, and anyone else who does not feel fully seen will feel the positive impacts of this new position. Every child in the district should feel as though they belong the moment they walk in through the doors to their interactions with staff and their fellow peers. I know that safeguarding and defending the dignity of all, especially our most marginalized students is a part of our district's values. All the students will grow into becoming better people and future community members with this work. And I thank you for your seriousness and in investing in it. As a board member and more, a board member of FAIR and more so a parent of children in this community, thank you. And I should have said off the bat, I do apologize for mispronouncing anyone's name. I know I mispronounced your last name as well. So my apologies for, for that. Our next speaker is Cynthia Sabatini. Cynthia Sabatini, Upper Providence. I'd like to address and pose questions to the board and administration about the proposed new school slated for construction in Edgemont. My first question is, and let me note that all these questions will be submitted via email afterwards. How has COVID-19 impacted the need for a new school? On the district's website in the Room to Learn, Room to Grow page, in response to the FAQ, how has COVID-19 affected this process? The following response is noted. The pandemic has caused us to change how we reach students. In the long term, the way education is delivered will continue to evolve. Although the COVID-19 pandemic and demographic shifts may potentially change the amount of educational space needed, it does not negate the need for additional space. No substantiation of this conclusion is provided. Since taxpayers will be funding the new school, taxpayers must be informed as to why the need for additional space in a changing environment is still needed. Related to my first question, has the district started to assess how current and future enrollment in RTMSD's virtual school, currently subcontracted to the firm Adventum, over the course of the next few years, will affect the need for a new elementary school. I'm specifically referring to interest in virtual schooling beyond the pandemic. Once again, on the district's website in the Room to Learn, Room to Grow page, the following statistics have been reported. Over the past five years, our enrollment has grown over 6% from 3,742 students 
through the 2014-2015 school year to 3,974 students through the 2019-2020 school year. These statistics are two years old and should be updated so that taxpayers know the district is making decisions on current information. Having said this, what are the number of students enrolled in the district for the 2021-2022 school year, broken down by those attending brick and mortar facilities and those attending virtually? Taking it a step further, what are the grade school enrollment numbers for 2021-2022 versus 2020-2021? And what is the percentage increase or decrease? Additionally, on the same Room to Learn, Room to Grow page, the following statement is made. Through the demographic studies completed, our district is proposed to have a 20% enrollment growth in our elementary schools. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Liz Linton. Uh, Liz Linton, 14 Spring Street in Upper Providence. Uh, I just wanted to take the time tonight to come and thank the board for all the work that you have been doing these past few years. You have greatly improved transparency and made it so much easier for us parents, uh, my kids are in second and fourth grade at media, um, to stay informed about what's happening in the district. The updates to the website are fantastic. And I really appreciate how quickly you respond to questions. So. Just thank you. Thank you. And I should clarify for the record, um, I think I didn't repeat it, Liz Linton from Upper Providence. Mm -hmm. Our next speaker is Casey Girardi from Media Borough. Good evening, members of the board and Dr. Dean Marino Lennon. I am Casey Coburn Girardi. I live in Media Borough. My husband is president of the Media Alliance Club. I also have a business on Olive Street in Media Borough. My children go to Media Elementary. They're in kindergarten and third grade. I have been attending the meetings for a year and a half now, either virtually or in person. And I want to thank you all for your transparency, for your activism, and for your representation of the community and of the families. Most importantly, I cannot get over the overwhelming participation that we have seen since the pandemic started, that the community is now attending these meetings. The first time I came, there were only three people in attendance. It is overwhelming and it is wonderful. And you all have taken that to heart. You respond to emails, often within hours of getting them. There is very, very strong active postings on the Facebook page. And I think that you all take that to heart, whether you come with them or not, it is evident that you see them and that you listen. Most importantly, it is the transparency and the fact that people wanted these meetings to be live streamed and you immediately took the steps to do so, that the committee meetings are now being live streamed, which they were not before, that you respond and that you are taking steps to address not just the parents in the community, but non-parent residents. So I wanna thank you again for everything that you've done and that you continue to do and that we are very lucky to have this board. Thank you. Our next speaker is Ken Bennett of Middletown. Good evening, everybody. My name is Ken Bennett of uh, 23 Barron Road here in Middletown. And uh, in the spirit of full disclosure, I am a candidate for school board. So um, I do want to say uh, thank you for the presentation that the school district put on at the Edgman Township special meeting uh, the other night. I think it was really important to have another presentation of what's going on uh, with the new school there. I think uh, working closely with the township is really important. Uh, the people who were in attendance and the people who spoke were almost exclusively uh, neighbors within walking distance of the proposed new building. Um, though they did raise some very uh, important issues about um, sewage, water, energy, and traffic. Uh, there may have been others, but those were the ones that struck me. 
Um, I think you guys have done a tremendous job of being transparent with this process as much as you can. Uh, and I look forward to reading uh, the responses to the concerns that people have on when they're available to folks. Um, I know how hard it is to manage all the stakeholders and to work with contractors, architects, designers, and lawyers on a project like this. There's only so much you can predict and only so much you can share in advance. I've seen this up close and personal in uh, the Middletown Free Library, where I serve on the board. Uh, we are this close to opening our new site at the old Roosevelt School Building on Old Middletown Road. All we need is a certificate of occupancy for the first floor signed, and we can open our doors. We're very excited about this building. When it opens, it's going to be more than two times the size of the old library. And uh, it will have a dedicated makerspace, a media production studio, and multiple meeting areas. This was a complicated project that could not have happened without the support of the Middletown Township and the donors to our million dollar campaign. We've long worked closely with the school district. We've gotten some financial support from the school district, and we're really looking forward to getting more kids into the building to do all kinds of projects when the building is open. And we're especially excited that we're within three quarters of a mile of uh, Indian Lane, um, maybe even walking distance for some of the families. So uh, thank you and look forward to working with the school district in my capacity on the library going forward once we're open, hopefully next week, but you don't know for sure. Thank you. Thank you. Our, our next speaker is Kelly Yadam of Upper Providence. Good evening, I'm Kelly Adam, and I reside at 295 Marcella Lane. Mom, I'm the only brown child in my class. Mom, when can my skin be white? I love that I can barely tell you're black. You're pretty for a black girl. Are you feeling uncomfortable? Imagine what our students of color feel with the sigh. Children asking their teachers when they're going to read books with brown characters, names of Indian children rudely being sung to Bollywood music because their peers do not understand how deeply offensive and derogatory that is. And sadly, there are multiple stories around cultural insensitivity, as I heard in the sigh in the background, that could easily consume the rest of this meeting. Simply put, our nation's education system is flawed when all learners are not included. How does that happen? It happens when we fail to teach about all of history and our history books do not relate the true stories of our nation. It happens when we frame slaves as happy refer to them as servants, and neglect to talk about the revolts, the resistance, and the resilience that demonstrated the indomitable spirit of enslaved people. It happens when we eliminate the stories of the door of no return in Ghana, West Africa, where Ghanaians would never be able to touch the soil of their home country again. It happens when Thanksgiving is still being portrayed as Native Americans happily welcoming pilgrims instead of them deeply mourning their loss due to land expansion, disease, and exploitation of resources. It happens when we cannot openly celebrate the LGBTQ plus community and engage in conversations about the LGBTQ plus figures who made an indelible mark in history because they stood up for love being loved. And what about the issues of socioeconomic status, disabilities and religion? What about families who have to fast during Ramadan and their peers do not have the background knowledge to support that religious commitment? And this is just a small sample of stories that are left out, ignored, devalued because we've become comfortable with white, male dominant narratives. If this has gone unnoticed for anyone in this room, I encourage you to reflect upon your privilege. While many Rose Tree Media school district administrators, teachers, and school board members have moved the needle, Ralph Harrison as the director of safety and inclusion will be able to solely focus on leading the charge on how RTMSD shifts to an inclusive, equitable, and safe educational space. Bottom line, no one should be excluded. And no one should be made to feel guilty. And when we intentionally create mirrors for our underrepresented students, everyone wins because now everyone has an opportunity to be a part of their educational space. This is not a political issue. This is a human issue. Yes, it is, sir. I'm talking to you. Yep. Thank you to the administration and school board for your commitment to equity and inclusion. I implore everyone in this room and in our community to leave a legacy of pride and to stand behind the director of inclusion and safety. Thank you. Our next speaker is Gina, Gina 
my apologies, Gina Sasso. <laughs> That's clearly not right, and I'm so sorry. <laughs> but you are from Upper Providence. That much I can say. My apologies, ma'am. Hey, uh, my name is Gina P. Sassal, and I'm from Two North Edgemont Street Media. Um, this is the first time I'm doing anything like this, speaking at a school board meeting. Um, but I felt the need because of the rising energies in my community and our community um, that bolster this feeling of exclusion by people that present like me. Um, so I felt compelled to engage in conversation here, despite the great crazy discomfort that I'm feeling right now. Um, I am here to speak in full support of the new Administrator for Safe and Inclusive Schools position and in support of Mr. Harrison. I am many things. I am the mother of a third and first grader at Media Elementary. I am a new member of FAIR and have become part of the leadership team at Media. I lived in Media for over 16 years. I went to St. Andrews in Drexel Hill, Archbishop Prendergast, University of Richmond, then Villanova for my master's and University of Maryland for my PhD. I've been married for 20 years, but almost became a missionary Catholic nun right before then, much to my husband's chagrin. I ride a Honda Shadow 1100 motorcycle. I have an identical twin sister. We were born in Pusan, South Korea, but put in separate foster homes, only to be reunited at the airport when we were three months old after being adopted by a couple in Upper Darby and raised Irish Catholic. So I can only cry in Korean. I cannot speak it. I grew up surrounded and loved by a white family, friends, and community. I'm telling you all this to illuminate small, very small pieces of my humanity. Because one of my earliest memories is being targeted by some kids' racist taunts. One of my professors at the graduate level asked if English was my first language. A woman at Trader Joe's the other day asked if I was from Wuhan, China. These people would never consider that my maiden name is McGlinchey, or that I'll now be very reluctant to give them a ride on my motorcycle because I do not present as white. In the past few months, one of the arguments I've heard about considering equity when designing curriculums or thinking about school material is that it can be made, it can make white students quote unquote feel bad. I would like to encourage us to rephrase that idea as feeling human because none of us are perfect. Our kids make mistakes every day, but the amazing opportunity that we are granted is to then help them learn from their mistakes and not to make them feel that they are their mistakes. The flip side of that is that non-white students can feel secondary or not even visible in history and in the world. When the Upper Providence police officer that pulled me over asked if my name on my driver's license was my actual last name, and if I actually owned the 1100 CC bike I was riding, the full complexity of me was rendered invisible. And as all of us that our parents experience daily, there's something that strikes your kids to the core when they don't feel seen or heard which can connect to also ways that you can imagine yourself in situations when you have felt this kind of invisibility to not feeling safe. That this position is called the administrator for safe and inclusive schools is so very fitting. How much of our lives have centered white, male, heterosexual, able-bodied, neurotypical, gender binary conforming, middle to upper class people? Thank you. Our next speaker is Jennifer Matsinga from Upper Providence. I'm right. I got that one correct. <laughs> Jennifer Matsinga. Good evening, Dr. Dean Maria Lennon and school board. My name is Jennifer Matsinger. I live in Hunt Club Lane in Upper Providence. I also do not like public speaking, so bear with me. I have five children, three have graduated from Pencrest. One is a junior and one is a sophomore. Um, my husband has been the head coach for the lacrosse boys team for the past 21 years. He's been here for 34 total. I am a Pencrest alumni and I am also vice president of the PTG board. I am here to thank you all for everything you guys have done for all of us, our students, parents for the past 18 months because it's been crazy. Um, and I also wanna thank you for keeping Mr. Harrison. I, he's my favorite. He has been with me. I've worked with him for 12 years. My son, my oldest, suffered from a neurological, excuse me, disorder. We found it out his freshman year of high school. Ralph was his biggest advocate. He was vice principal at the time and helped us get the help that my son needed. 
My second son, who graduated in 2016, came out. He is a gay man. We got help with him also. He was included, was not excluded from anything. Ralph has always found a way to help. Yes, we are a white family. I am so happy that everything is opening up and everyone is being included and everyone feels included. And I hope it is more. I hope it is more transparent. I hope it is open for everyone. Um, with that being said, I just want to thank you. He has been an amazing help for me, for my family, for my children. Anytime we've needed anything, he has helped us. Um, as with most of our teachers here, they're all here to help, no matter their race, gender, color, or anything. I've never had a problem. So I just want to thank all of you and thank you for keeping Mr. Harrison. Thank you. Our next uh, commenter is Wendy Allen of Media Borough. Good evening, Dr. Maria and Dr. Newman and the school board. Uh, my name is Wendy Allen. I have three children, two sons who graduated from Pancras last year, and a daughter who's in 10th grade. Uh, just hearing everybody talk about how school was last year, she actually stayed home the whole time. She was scared to come in school, to school. Um, but she came back this year and she's having a great year. So I just want to let you guys know that everything's going good at Pancras. Um, <laughs> Um, I've been part of the PTG executive board and had work, worked with Mr. Harrison for two years. Um, uh, I want to thank you for creating that new position. Um, I know there was some discussion about things like that on social media about it, but I think he's a really good fit for that. Um, he's, he's been the principal of Pencrest, I believe, for over six years and then nine years as uh, an assistant principal. Uh, during that time, he does what needs to be done at school. Uh, one good example would be graduation. Uh, the last two graduating classes almost didn't have a graduation ceremony. You guys know how challenging that was. I know you have sons and all there. So, I mean, he does what needs to be done to get things, to make everybody, tries to make everybody happy, which, you know, is very hard to do. Um, in my opinion, Ralph Harris, along with the Pencrest administration, provided a safe, secure, equitable, inclusive educational environment for the students. Pancras is an incredible school with involved teachers, staff, students, and parents. Ralph Harrison has shown optimism, cultural intelligence, humility, curiosity, and commitment to action in getting the job done. Thank you for creating the new position uh, administrator for safe and inclusive schools. Thank you. Thank you. Next comment for is Frank Horkowitz of Middletown. You guys hear me all right? I got Frank Longwitz at 22 War Trophy Lane, Media, Pennsylvania. Good evening. I'm here to speak on the discrepancies within our school district's health and safety plan. Tonight, I'll be referencing two documents if any of the board members would like to follow along. Our own health and safety plan summary, Rose Tree Media School District, and the Pennsylvania of Health, uh, Department of Health, order directing face coverings in school entities. First, referencing our school district's health and safety plan, at the end of section A, the last bullet point states, the district will adhere to any orders or mandates established by the Pennsylvania Department of Health. Moving on to section H, our school district's health and safety plan states that it may develop an IEP for disabled students whose diagnosis requires it. This is the only part of the health and safety plan that mentions accommodations for anyone would be considered, yet still fails to state whether any exceptions will actually be made. So I'm now going to reference Pennsylvania Department of Health's order here. 
which our health and safety plan clearly states it will adhere to. Agreed? Good. In this order, under section three, with the heading exemptions to covering requirement, there are eight exemptions to the mask mandate. Most notably, this allows that people with respiratory problems, such as myself, who literally can't breathe in a mask are exempt and people with mental health issues, such as Emma who spoke recently with such as anxiety are exempt also. Nowhere does it say that an individual needs to be classified as disabled or that the process needs to be drawn out with delays such as reconvening an IEP, they are merely exempt. These exemptions are currently being honored in nearby school districts, it's a fact, allowing parents to make decisions for their own children. To, th to this point, I've stood in front of the board and asked you to listen to the parents of the school district, the students of our schools, and to the doctors whom you've asked to speak for you. Now, I'm asking you to follow the rules that you have created. Rules created in echo chamber with no community input. I know that if this community was involved in writing this plan, it looked entirely different. We were all here that night. But for now, we'll just deal with the rules that we have. Thank you. That concludes, that concludes our public comments for the evening. All right, then moving on now, as you can see on the agenda, we don't have any old business at this time. So we're going to move on to new business. Um, before I do, I wanted to just make a quick note for those who attended our committee meetings or listened in, you might have heard us discuss the um, possibility of having um, supplementals, additional supplementals we were hoping to be able to approve and we were hoping would be on the agenda for this evening in regards to numerous extracurriculars. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we had, there were four agenda items that actually had anticipated uh, being included for tonight in relation to that. Unfortunately, um, they are not included tonight because the union, the RTMEA, voted to um, against uh, adopting the proposed contract. And so therefore, um, we do not have those four items in relation to supplementals on the agenda. So that being said, to avoid any confusion, I wanted to clarify that what that means is we will continue under the old terms of the contract in regards to extracurricular supplementals. I know on social media there had been some concern about was there some kind of hold up or a lack of interest in non sport related extracurriculars? And, and that wasn't the case, like that we clarified in committee meeting. We were hoping to be able to proceed and vote on them tonight at the last minute. All right, then. So, moving on, like I said, to new business under human resources, I would uh, propose that we group one through 19 together in one motion. Is there any objection to my doing so? Okay, seeing and hearing none. Do I have a motion to pass letter A, one through 19? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Right, next up, we'll move on to letter B. I would propose that we uh, have one motion for one and two. Um, Excuse me, I should say B1 and 2. I propose we group them together in one motion. Is there any objection to my doing so? Hearing and seeing none. Do I have a motion for B1 and 2? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Discussion. I just like to say it's really great to see the students might be able to get to go somewhere for the first time in a really long time. That is true. Very, very true. <laughs> any other discussion? All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Next up is just for first reading review, not for a vote, would be um, just a policy to revision for policy 005 organization. So again, this is the first read and review, not a vote. We will have it on the agenda for next legislative. All right, now moving on um, for finance. I would go ahead and propose that we group A1 through 7 together in one motion. Is there any objection to my doing so? Hearing and seeing none, do I have a motion to pass A1 through 7? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. 
Sorry, can I clarify? A second. <laughs> Discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Next up for letter B, we have a ratification of the Youth Truth Survey. Do I have a motion? So moved. Do I have a second? A second. Second. <laughs> Discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Next up, I would suggest you group letters C and D together in one motion. Is there an objection to my doing so? Hearing and seeing none, do I have a motion to pass letters C and D? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Discussion. <laughs> I see everyone play along so well. <laughs> <laughs> all right, then, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. All right, next up, we have human resources agenda A one through six. I'm going to go ahead and suggest that we group one through six together in one motion. Is there any objection to my doing so? Hearing and seeing none, do I have a motion to pass um, A1 through six? So, so moved. moved. Try that again. Do we have a motion for A1 through six? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. We do not have any agenda for finance. So I'll just make an announcement that there will be an executive session of the school board for matters of personnel at 6 30 p.m. prior to legislative meeting for the next one of October 28, 2021, here at Pencrest High School. As previously noted, the legislative meetings are recorded on tape. So last but not least is adjournment. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Do I have a second? Second. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. We're adjourned. Thank you very much.